second protocol is the CUPS protocol. This is a, a separate, uh, separate engine, also a separate state engine within uh, a station. And it's, it's using HTTPS POST um, with a JSON encoded body, which contains uh, some metadata like my version, my current version, and the hashes of my credential sets that I have. And uh, the server endpoint will respond with a highly efficient binary format that I can take directly and stream into, and stream into my flash if I'm an embedded device. Otherwise, I parse it and put it into my file system. And it will contain the, uh, uh, a new set of credentials, either for the CUPS endpoint or for the LNS endpoint or for both or none. So if, if my credentials are up to date, I can just send basically empty responses back. The response could also contain a, a firmware update blob. So this is a uh, to, to station. This is just an uh, opaque blob of executable code. I will dump this in the file system and try to execute it. This makes uh, this scheme for for a quite um, a flexible firmware update scheme. So this uh, blob can contain an, an, um, an auto extraction archive that is then executed. Can contain a bash script. And it fetches something from somewhere. So this is just some piece of executable code that will run if it's uh, signed. So the uh, only signed code gets uh, executed, of course. And the signature, the, uh, the private key of the of the public key that I have, is typically, or in this key, will typically be owned by by the gateway manufacturer because that's the entity that would generate a new um, a new firmware. So the expectation is that the CUPS server endpoint in the back end, if it receives a, a request from, from, from a station, which it does maybe periodically or when it first boots up, um, it will check with some type of LNSCA or identity manager if there is new uh, credentials for this, um, for this gateway. Should I update its credentials maybe because some certificate uh, expired or needs to roll over? And it will check with the firmware repository for signed firmware images and will push the firmware update together with the signature down and this can then be verified uh, down here. This executable piece of code could also contain uh, a, a key update, for example. It could contain a new public key for future uh, firmware updates. So you see you can actually change the ownership of that gateway uh, that way that you introduce a new key and a new party has now the power to execute code on that platform. So this is sort of meant as a quite flexible scheme to do uh, all kinds of things. It's, it's, uh, and uh, to me it uh, looks like sort of the common low, lowest common denominator for yeah, gateway management tasks. Of course this protocol does not fulfill the entirety of everything that you want to do in gateway management because there are many aspects and many aspects that are actually platform specific in terms of gateway management, but this uh, allows you to facilitate uh, credential management and very basic sort of secure code execution on that gateway, which already gives you a good handle on many management tasks that you want to do, typically. 